within this particular particular area where young people with disability are not recognized for their mental health and we talk only about disability like that disability is the only reason why would someone feel bad and that was a big big problem so we started uh, talking with psychologists of course the lady we invited she's uh, uh, one very very important women with disability she's now a director of our national movement but that's another story but she's a good psychologist and she wanted to talk with our participants about their mental health and that was the first step where those girls and boys started to talk how they feel and we realized that mostly it doesn't have a very uh, big difference between uh, girls and boys from typical population they're lonely they're worried about some regular things and that was a big step for us so later on uh, we were i don't know like a family so it's like two years only but i see now that uh, many of them are very interested in everything we do so this year we continued project with the uh, human rights committee and they are really big support for us uh, this is like continuation for our first project but uh, this time we started to do something creative and organize the workshops for creative writing so that was amazing because everyone who participated wanted to create their own uh, piece of work and they started writing and we have support so we could pay them and that was like some kind of first job for many of them so i'm very proud of all of them and when i talk i also see how many also how not much is needs to motivate them and to put them on the right track and show them that they can do whatever they want um, so what's next uh, i don't know to be honest because all of this is still work uh, work in progress but uh, we are organized in that way that it's also an informal group so basically we want to put that on some new level maybe create a bigger organization and start to uh, co-produce something in still in this digital and online area so i hope that uh, you will see i mean you will see very soon what we created with them but uh, some future is i hope bringing new things for all of us so we will see where the impact is going to be uh, thank you for listening and i hope i wasn't very fast so but i was so exciting while talking <laughs> thank you Thank you very much. Uh, you spend less time than uh, it was planned. Uh, and <laughs> thank you for that. But uh, that's uh, for the uh, much more time for the audience to raise a question. For me now, uh, it's a dilemma uh, either to create new organization or try to be involved in the already existing organization and try to change them step by step. So that was something which we can discuss later on. And uh, Sandra didn't mention yet self-esteem as a, a, and self-confidence as a, a, as, a, a, as a starting point for young people to be uh, much more ready to be uh, publicly seen, loud, proud, visible, active, whatever, you know. And those are issues. Uh, I think uh, uh, our next presenter uh, will uh, uh, talk about a little bit. Uh, Martine from Yulova, she will talk about how to organize uh, the, the, the camps yeah? uh, for, for, for young people, for young people with disability, and uh, probably 
they learned that from from us from the beginning of independent living because that was how the the, the independent living idea start to be uh, spread among us persons with disability uh, disability so martin word is your thank you so much good afternoon everyone my name is Simone and I'm a disabled woman from Norway. Uh, I have red hair and I'm wearing glasses. And today I'm wearing a pink dress with flowers and a black cardigan and some white sneakers. I work as a political advisor in Aloba Independent Living Norway. And Aloba is a part of the European Independent Living Movement. And we were also the organization that took the idea of citizens that led personal assistance and put it into practice in Norway. And we work uh, for an inclusive society for everyone and that everyone in the society should have the same freedom and uh, the same value. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about our very first activist camp for young adults with disability that we called uh, Camp Freedom. And Camp Freedom is an activist camp for young people with disabilities that is aged between 18 and 35 years old. And the aim is to inspire and to empower uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's disability rights activists, so we can stand together in the fight for human rights and equality. And um, Camp Freedom was, of course, inspired from uh, the summer camp from the Netflix documentary Crit Camp uh, that was about Camp Janet that was organized outside of New York in the 60s and 70s. And during this camp, uh, young people with disabilities could be uh, young people first and foremost. And also personal assistance was a natural part of the daily, everyday life uh, at the camp. And it was also good for the young people to come together because in the society that were um, almost invisible. And uh, our formal participant during this camp is Judith Human, that is uh, well known as a pioneer in the independent mo living movement. Um, and we know that uh, every fight for human rights and equality has been fronted by young activists. So we wanted to uh, organize our Camp Freedom for the first time, 50 years after the Camp Janet. And we organized it last summer. And because of the pandemic, we had to organize it digitally on Teams. And we had uh, 16 young participants that had signed on this Camp Freedom. And Camp Freedom was uh, uh, arranged for one week with a lot of activities and workshops uh, where the young people could learn about the disability rights movement and the in independent living movement and about the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And they also learned about uh, different types of model and understandings of disabilities so that they can learn that there's nothing wrong with themselves having a disability, but it's the uh, society that is not inclusive for everyone. Um, and they also learned about uh, disability and sexuality because also in Norway, there's a lot of youth with disabilities that doesn't get educated about sexuality because there's a thinking that uh, disabled people don't have a sexuality, but uh, it's very important to learn about it. 
it means a lot of your own identity. And we know that love is universal, so it's important for everyone to, to learn about it. So we organize this as a workshop, so the youth could ask questions and, and reflect uh, together. Um, and also, in the we had a free time in the program where we asked the participants to put their knowledge about disability rights movements into practice. Where we ask them to write an article or make a program or a campaign and do something active about their knowledge. And uh, they had one day to make this. So it was not a lot of time. And then they had to present this video or poem or article to, to, to the other participants. And then they could give feedback to one another. Uh, and we saw it was uh, important uh, to give them this task. So they got the opportunity to grow and, and be giving the responsibility. And we know that disabled people usually don't get uh, run responsibility and don't get an arena to, to grow. So we saw that it's as a very important, important part of their camp. Uh, and also in the evening, the participants got the opportunity to be show show and watch a movie together. We watch a quick camp, of course, and, and have a quiz and some games during the evening. And also it was a good time to reflect on what they have learned. And, and because of that the camp was arranged digitally, it was not a problem with having personal assistant because you could just participants played from your home and uh, from your own living room and we saw that it was a lot of people uh, coming from different parts of Norway that was uh, coming together on this camp and they could share experience with each other from their life uh, from the uh, from the barriers that they meet in society and the way they get disconnected in the society and we, so it was also a good area area for uh, peer support that we didn't plan on doing but we saw that uh, they they were uh, sharing experience with each other and this year we are happy to announce that the uh, the camp freedom will be in person and we will have the camp freedom later this year we will have it um, during the un independent independent day uh, for persons with disability and we will have the camp uh, from the friday the second of december to sunday the fourth of december and um, we will have it on our new members' house in Norway for independent living Norway. And here we have a weekend pack with good and educational educator, uh, conversation and social activities. And here they will learn about uh, the independent living movement and about different types of activism and how to take care of each other as activists. And also they get the knowledge that they need about human rights for disabled people. And we see that this it's very important to invest on, on uh, young, young people because there's the one that is going to take action for to mothers, to mother tomorrow and be the new generation of disability rights activists. And we saw it was a good, um, it's a good arena to make new contact with young people with disabilities and perhaps form new friendship. And 
we see that uh, when we invest on young people, we have some new generation can can fight the battle for equality and human rights that they don't return back to institution isolations and have a big role in the society. And it's important that we never rest and that we give a room for the future activists to be a guard dogs. And they must also accept that they have to fight for have the same rights and opportunity as others. And they cannot be satisfied to anything less than others in the society. And if you want to arrange your own camp, Creek camp or camp freedom, it's important to have fundings to do so and have a good working team that can make a good program and arena for young and young adults. And it's good to, to have a target group the age range. And we see that if you want to conduct it digitally on Teams or Zoom, it's not so expensive than if you wanted to do it in person. But I think it's very important to make this camp for young uh, people so they can learn about the independent living movement and also share experience with each other and it's a good arena to grow as a human being, but also as an activist for your right and freedom in the society. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Martin, because uh, you remind me on camp we organized in uh, 2019 for uh, around 70 young people uh, from all around the Bosnia. And uh, also that remind me that uh, independently somehow all around the uh, globe, we disabled people and our organization uh, come to the same idea uh, how, how to, to mobilize and how how to motivate uh, young people to be much much more involved and i'm sure that uh, uh, in a discussion in the dialogue which will happen uh, until now to the end of the workshop uh, we will have much more opportunity to exchange our experience and uh, maybe to uh, initiate new partnership and open new possibilities for young people across Europe to, to, to be much more together with, with, other, uh, with other young people, with other colleagues to make new allies and uh, new uh, partners in promoting and fighting for rights of persons with disabilities. Here, I want just to remind you on um, possibility which email create for young people. One of them is a traditional uh, workshop email organized with the uh, support and uh, within the Council of Europe every June in Strasbourg. And I don't know, maybe Ines can give Laura. much. Sorry? Laura. Laura. Okay, Laura can, can, okay, okay. Yeah, can give much more information. And I know also that recently uh, there is opportunity for uh, young people interesting for uh, employment and entrepreneurship and uh, uh, all this stuff. Uh, also uh, to be involved in the project also Emil uh, is uh, realizing and there is workshop which will happen in Bulgaria about uh, uh, entrepreneurship entrepreneurship and, and, and youth with disability. So I would like to give floor uh, now to, to Laura to share a uh, short info about those workshops uh, happen every year in the Council of Europe. Laura, please. 
Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm not prepared to give a speech. <laughs> I'm here to make notes, but indeed, uh, every year, Anil is uh, organizing, together with the support of uh, Council of Europe Youth Department, a uh, study session where everyone is welcome if they are aged between 18 and 35. We can make some exceptions, uh, but it's mostly dedicated for young people and all persons with any type of disabilities or access needs are very welcome to apply for this study session. It always takes place in summer in Strasbourg, which is an amazing city. I think you must can confirm that. <laughs> also quite accessible. So I know that this year we also have, will be having a study session uh, somewhere in June. And uh, stay tuned at any website so you will definitely see the call coming. Uh, and you're everyone is welcome to apply and be part of this because it's really an amazing experience. I've been there myself, and I think those connections we built uh, in Strasbourg by working together on human rights is very strong and very encouraging and fulfilling. So uh, don't miss it out and stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, very much for uh, your uh, quick and uh, comprehensive info about the study session. And uh, you see how it, uh, how it, uh, uh, it is uh, to be disability activist, activist, always ready, never tired, to struggle for, for, for opportunity and rights of us persons with disability. So now I will stop and give floor to you for uh, questions and uh, maybe comments, please raise your hand and uh, uh, say word or whatever your name. Okay, Melissa from Tuzla. <laughs> it's a quick question. Do we have two <laughs> Do we have to speak English for the workshop in Strasbourg? Of course. Yeah? Yes, it is. Yeah. Can you hear me if I talk? I can. Uh, no, don't. Uh, is that you want to do your whole question or is that your no, question? No, that's the question. Okay, <laughs> then I. Of the youngest. <laughs> like, uh, also one. Yes, it, I think it's way better to speak English, but I know that in some cases we have people who are struggling a bit with English, but they can bring a personal assistant. And if the personal assistant can help to communicate, that's also an option. And also, if you're having someone with a um, hearing impairment, uh, we also, Council of Europe provides them to be involved. So yeah. just let us know the access needs and we will see what, what can we do. We're gonna learn English until next time. So we still have time, yes. Yeah. So thank you uh, very much. That is a challenge for disabled activists. If, the, if you want to be international advocates and disability activists, it's it's a precondition to to learn uh, English. I know that my is very very bad, and you see me. I can even moderate such a workshop. <laughs> okay. Questions, comments. My name is Sebastian, uh, and I'm from uh, Flanders, actually. Um, so I am, first of all, very happy to see that uh, Bosnians and Serbians are sitting at uh, one table and that the relationships between... Uh, That's not for the first time. <laughs> between between, between uh, uh, people with disabilities uh, and uh, the seem to be uh, working very well. Um, so my question uh, for you was, you, maybe both of you, you you're starting uh, to organize a, uh, a movement out of, out of nothing. Um, where do you recruit when you find the, the first batch of, of, of people? Do you, do, you, do you find them in institutions? Do you find them in schools? Do you find them... Uh, uh, with with their parents, you knock on doors. Do you, do you, yeah. I, I have I have uh, more uh, but, uh, more questions. We, 
welcome to the speakers to answer them. Um, what you have to uh, okay, so what's whatever you prefer. Is there, I, I have okay. a, a second part. I, I think my voice is loud enough to uh, go. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And so, so the first part is where, where, where is, where is your, your starting point? The, the second uh, part is um, you were, you were talking about, um, you, you teach them about their human rights. And, uh, and I think we all know and experience that it's one thing that we know about our human rights, but when we then go out into a society and, and, and especially you guys with a group of 50 people start shouting about human rights, you must be laughed at even even in Flanders where we are relatively advanced, you know, we, we always get confronted with the question, there is no money to for the for the implementation of the uh, the, the UN, UN Convention. Uh, and, um, and 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 your human rights just have to have to wait until the money until there's money. And staying with money and um, one essential aspect of, of taking up your your independent life is personal assistance. So when you teach uh, a, a personal assistance budget for a lot of people, so so when you uh, in your situation there is no no government uh, subsidies. So which means do you use to to get uh, people live their independent life. You know, how do they finance, organize, which, which ways of, uh, of of having an independent life without the aid of the personal assistance budget? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, more question? And you let them answer. It was quite yeah. enough. So that this was the wrong one. So can we answer? Yeah, this is comprehensive <laughs> question. Uh, okay, of course that we will try to answer. Uh, the, 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 the history of the uh, IC Lotus is uh, 25 year. Uh, we celebrate this year uh, half the independent living. <laughs> Uh, philosophy and, and, and movement. So, but for the youth, we start as as my colleague Sandra says eight years ago. And what I want to 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 to, um, to highlight uh, is that all of us in Europe, we are uh, more lucky than our brothers and sisters uh, in the rest of the world, because although we are not satisfied, we live much, much more uh, better life and quality, quality life than brothers and sister, sisters in other parts of, of, of the world. And that also means that we try to find a way to live independently even we don't have uh, assured resources let's say people in a in a rich country or developed country have uh, idea of independent living is either dream or partially dream or, uh, and partially uh, all already implemented among at least few of us uh, with disability. And that's, that's really issue we uh, must have in mind when we advocate for our rights. It, uh, the, the UN convention is a great, the idea is a great, but real life is uh, many times something different and circumstance, circumstances and struggle of brothers and sisters 
around the globe for our, their dignity and independence is amazing. And often, often some of us, they, we are successful. So I will give a floor first to Sandra and then to Milica and Martin. I will try to summarize the short answers to both questions. First question was about uh, how we find young people. And the answer will be uh, in every possible way. Uh, for example, when we did research, we uh, had two consultants who were professor, uh, professors in university, and they did research and found them through their contacts and our contacts also family members, schools, as you said, uh, uh, if I mentioned when I was uh, doing presentation, day centers, all kinds of uh, connections which we had. And we did research of a lot um, larger number of young people. And then we selected 15 in the, for the first group. And, um, you know, we are a relatively small community. Everybody knows somebody. And sometimes the majority of the next, say, generation from next project cycle came from the youth that was in the first group. So they brought their friends. They brought their friends from health clinics or schools or, or, or neighborhoods and so on. Uh, the, the, another thing about personal assistance, which we admit is a huge problem, not, uh, I'm talking now about when we realize activities, not talking about huge problem in their own lives, of course, that's the, the, the main issue, but um, we are uh, organizing personal assistance for every activity we have, because there is no other way to have it. Uh, for example, uh, if we have parents, both parents in, in training and young people, somebody has to provide assistance. So we, we uh, managed to, over the years, uh, do even a little bit of training for personal assistance and, and uh, basically paying for this service from the project, which is not, of course, not ideal or, or wishful, but that is the only possible way now to, to, to operate. And also we use all possible resources. Every member of the staff uh, now, Freedom Drive is also assistant. Um, so you know what, how they say, uh, necessity is mother of invention. So uh, basically we use all possible resources. Uh, uh, but the, the, you, you explained uh, that a handful of them now have jobs and now have a, a, yes. an independent life. Still life. no assistance. No. For example, in, in our- a proper way, no. No. I mean, they have assistance in sense of they have friends and colleagues who provide assistance. Uh, for example, uh, people who work in IC Lotus who needs transportation and uh, personal assistance are provided by, by us, by organization. Um, also, they function in their families the way that majority of people with disabilities function. And even some live alone, but still uh, live without assistance. And uh, this question cannot be, uh, this problem cannot be solved by any kind of project. Uh, it's an issue that is, uh, very deep problem in our society. We still don't have even consensus about the ways of personal assistance should uh, exist. Um, so um, we we try to um, to approach to independent living as as we always say to a philosophy. It's a it's a matter of me deciding for myself. Um, conditions can can be different uh, in some countries uh, worse, in some countries better. But still, if we had the approach that I'm making my own choices in life, I'm able to live independently with that resources which I have. Of course, uh, it's far from desired, uh, desired outcome, but that's why we are creating this young generation of activists so we can advocate for, for changes in, in society. Well, my answer about the gathering people will be similar since I mentioned we started when what is pandemic here and everything. So we try to go through social media, through online. Whenever we can, we scroll through our contacts, send the invitation letters, talk about what we want to do and everything. So it was a really small group of people when we started. And after that, everyone was uh, eager to try more and call someone else. So we get uh, even those people in institutions who were 
uh, I didn't know about them and I live in the same town. So it was really weird for me to finally find, find out about one girl who was there and she accepted my invitation to come on our first Zoom online uh, meeting and that was amazing. So, so in a way, social, uh, social media helped us a lot. So I don't want to say that's the best way, but for us, that was the best way because we didn't have any other resources except that and except the, our motivation, self-motivation to go there and find people and call them out. Uh, but uh, we have also a situation in national organization where they uh, decided to call people who are already active. Uh, and in some kind, they are uh, role models, maybe for other people with disabilities, young people, precisely. And they called about 20, 20 young people with disability to come there and uh, go all, every summer on some camp where they learn new skills and everything. And that resulted that some other young people heard about that and they were enthusiastic and uh, wanted to participate themselves and go there. So I actually, I don't know what is better. I'm always to go to them who are still nowhere, who don't belong to any association or, or organization and help them from the from nothing, from the start. But as I can see, there are some other approaches. I don't, I don't know if that's bad or just the, like uh, you're uh, financing and you're going to help with those who are already active. But of course, as Sandra said, the personal assistance is problem everywhere. I'm coming from Novi Sad, uh, where we, the, like two years ago, we finally got uh, a good uh, law about personal assistance. Now every, uh, and now persons can get personal assistance, but also that's a really small group about 32 or 35 people uh, about that's a big town, one of the biggest in Serbia. So I don't know that that's a big problem. And that's something we we have to initiate more and talk about that more. Uh, I like how you presented the question about human rights. And when we go out and talk about human rights, how we were left and everyone actually uh, it's a big thing because uh, basically we educate people about their rights. But when we go out, other people know nothing about our rights, maybe their own. So it's a big deal. It's uh, really hard to get uh, the conscious of the other people what we need and what's the problem there because they don't have time or just don't care. So uh, that's the one uh, I don't have an answer, but uh, I'm trying, since I work in media, I'm trying to talk about that uh, in every possible way with my resources, how I can to, to provide knowledge for everyone, not only our community, because when you talk uh, to your community, it stays there and that's the problem. But when you try to reach out, uh, there you can see some small steps, but of course it's the beginning. So uh, I think that you're right and the struggle is real, but uh, trying to go out and be visible out there for people with no disability, it's a start. So I hope I answered. Yeah. Maybe my uh, yeah, I'm from Norway and I think maybe many of you think that everything is perfect from <laughs> Norway, but it's not because we have like politicians that agree on that everyone should be a part of the society and inclusive and everything, but they don't seem to do anything to remove the barriers in the society. And also, we have the uh, conceptions in Norway that the, that disability is only a medical issue, that it's not about human rights. We, when we have meetings with the politician, we can hear that they have the traditional uh, this, uh, understanding of disability and don't understand that it's about having an inclusive society and removing the barriers. So therefore, it's important to uh, educate young people with disabilities so they can 
fight for their rights and fight for their freedom and their basic human rights because because otherwise they will live a whole life in lockdown as they have an old experience for two years or so uh, but um, in Norway there's still some some young people that will be sent to nursing home even though they are just like 25 years old and they have to spend years there uh, and they have to change that so uh, the young people um, with disabilities don't have to live a life in lockdown. Yeah. So what, uh, there are two more questions here. Is it okay or you want to okay, I'll second? just make a short comment. Uh, it's uh, it's a nice discussion and it showed that uh, the, the, the more or less situation of us persons with disability around the globe is the same. That uh, confirm our partnership project as well because our colleagues from the steel uh stockholm they said that they learn a lot from us and then uh, that they will try to apply more or less same approach to our young with disability in a, a, in a stockholm and in sweden uh, motivating them to be much much more active and another issue i learned uh, uh last year from uh, one of pioneer of independent living mr adolf ratska is a difference between social and human rights model uh, of approach to our disability issue and within the human rights model uh, we persons with disability must be aware about rights with our rights which are the same like rights of our uh, other citizens and to use uh, tools uh, mechanisms for human rights give us that means un convention on rights of persons with, dis with disability and other international and national uh, laws and regulation to accuse uh, those uh, rights bearers and uh, to run cases in front of course and fight for our rights there because if we fight there uh, we will confirm uh, if we win of course and we, we are sure that we will win if we are uh, educated and uh, and uh, struggle enough long for our rights that uh, then a state or those who are obliged must pay uh, uh, penalties or compensation and at the same time change policy change attitude change approach etc etc and for me is uh, really important when we are talking publicly about our rights that we talk about same rights other citizens have not nothing different we have we are equal citizens and we have same rights so the, the, this is my reaction and then questions <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Selma Plantic. I come from Bosnia. Um, now I speak about my experience in Lotus. So that is a translated. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my name is Selma Plantic. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm just joking. Okay. Uh, yeah, some lot of social prena što malo više od dana. I came to Lotus about a year ago. Moj život prije Lotusa se svodio na školu, fakultet i kuću. My life before Lotus 
uh, was school, home, and uh, faculty. I wasn't from the beginning uh, on this project for the youth. Thanks to my colleague Ibrahim Šadić. I heard about the project and came to us. So to answer your question, she came through this guy. <laughs> Thanks to peer support as a part of the project. I came to an environment where it was um, important. What I am saying about. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> We talk in our peer group about uh, our pro problems, we share experiences. All together, we are a big family, including the staff. <laughs> staff is me. Yeah. <laughs> and Sandra and Suraj. The biggest thing is that we came to a place where uh, people have uh, expect expectations from us. Where we are not just uh, people or youth with uh, disability. We have our uh, plans, our goals, and wishes. Okay. We learned from the project that we have to do uh, some that we have to do uh, for ourselves things. You can't wait for others to do it for ourselves. That's all. Thank you. 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 I will talk about the things which I'm proud to be in this story, for which I'm proud of it. I do it First, because Lotus gave us a chance to learn, to educate. Uh, to trains and then they gave us opportunity to work and earn something and uh, make progress for ourselves together. <laughs> Suat says in the beginning of the project that uh, he is expecting from us ideas and initiative. Yeah. And that sentence I am leaving eight years since the beginning of the project. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
что ко мне я это была младенька погода с купальником. I'm proud of this all and I'm proud to be one of you uh, young people and that we can be together and talk about this. There is one message. Even though I never get my education, I didn't finish any of school. Lotus proved to me that even without school, an ordinary person can be independent. So I will end with this. Thank you. Hello to everyone. My name is Moich Shifika. I'm from Tuzla, I see Lotus. Okay. Uh, yeah, some also about Koyae Ulotos, that's what Preya Naki three Godina. I came to Lotus three years ago. Franchi Samimala Dakaje Sedanes Godina Svega. I was 17 years old. Your Samishla U Srednuskolu. I went to the middle school. Where I was a person uh, who always had uh, my mother with me. Uh, my mother made all decisions for me, uh, even though do I have to go to the toilet or what should I do next? So, so I didn't speak up. Although my mother was always with me, I do sports for like seven years, almost. I Sport is archery. Through Lotus. Was Bila Napredovala na neki način kroz aktivnosti projekte, to jest projekat jačanja kapaciteta, kroz personalitetom, jednostavno pronašla sam pravu sebe. Through the project, I found myself. Jes sada Mogu onaj reći da da imam svoje ja i da da sam osoba koja nije samo osoba s invaliditetom, da se baziram na tu samo, već sam osoba koja se kreće u društvu i koja je društvena aktivna u većini situacije. Now, uh, three years later, I can say for myself that I can speak up for myself. I have more friends and I'm more uh, social active. Uh, 
osmislila taj projekat za osobe s invaliditetom kao i osobe bez invaliditeta gdje smo učestvovali i na međunarodnom planu sa kolegama iz Crne Gore. Ok, with my friends, the young people with disabilities and without disabilities, we wrote some projects and gathering with our youth friends from Montenegro. Kroz moj sam aktivizam i ono što ja jesam trenutno, još mi je ostalo da naučim engleski i onda mogu i pres translate. Now, I have just to learn English and I can go on with the translator for my life and future. Okay, thank you, Sofika. Thank you, Shafika. Thank you, Ibrahim and Selma. This was spontaneous, uh, spontaneously reaction from uh, from participants, uh, people with disability who came from Bosnia, uh, young people with disability who came from Bosnia to the Freedom Drive, and I'm sure that they will be loud enough tomorrow uh, during the march demanding our rights. So, is there any uh, other? Uh, question, issue, reaction, except Bosnia. I guess this is more of a um, reflection rather than a question, but it's, for me, this always comes back to the idea of pride. And this idea of um, self-acceptance within within disability, because I think that without that, you start to feel like you are the problem or you are the thing that is at fault. But actually, once you start to learn or you start to accept that the thing that creates barriers is the society around you, then you can start to think about and formulate ideas on how you want to dismantle those barriers or work with others to dismantle those barriers. So really, it's, it, it comes back to this idea of self-acceptance and, and, and pride and saying, you know what, I matter as a disabled person. My voice matters as well as the voice of other disabled people around me. And I think that when we're coming together as young people, as youth, that is an opportunity for us to find where our shared values are and how we want to communicate those to impact those in power. The problem then becomes that actually the people in power are often those that don't want to hear from us, don't want to listen to us, don't want to prioritize youth or think about future generations. But ultimately, that is the most important. So then you need to find ways into the kind of corridors of power, which is what you've already been talking about in, in the panel. So yeah, that's just kind of my, my reflection, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm Charlie Willis from In All Youth. Okay, um, my name is Elizabeth Hiff. I'm from the United States. Um, I am interning at the Independent Living Institute, also in Stockholm, Sweden. We are in the same office as Steel, so we work very closely with them. Um, so I am heavily involved in the youth movement in the United States, and a lot of what we are focusing on right now involves social media presence and um, social mobility. So my question for you all is, are there any aspects of the disability rights movement that you've noticed particularly excite this upcoming generation of people that you're working with? Um, what are they focused on? What are they very eager to change in their own communities? Thank you. 
Thank you very much uh, for the reaction and the question. Mm, is there anybody from the uh, panelists, presenters, ready to, to react, to answer? I am. Yes. Maybe Well, thank you, Elizabeth. That was a great question. Uh, well, when you said the social media and social presence, uh, I realized that our young people are uh, already, in a way, educated, and they have that uh, knowledge about the medical model and social model. So that's uh, the first change they want to implement. So. Uh, going on a university, high school, and everywhere they want to be seen and they can advocate for their rights. So that's the first thing where they don't want to see a uh, child also said it very well. They want they don't want to see themselves as a problem and they want to offer uh, something which will solve the problems in that institution or wherever they are. Uh, so that's the first thing uh, they want to react immediately and something I'm very proud of So because they don't want to be quiet anymore. They want to immediately uh, give their expectation to others and show that uh, others can expect everything for, from them. So it's a big deal. Um, second, I think uh, they're going to talk a bit more about disability as just a part of their identity. They don't want to only, like Sama said, uh, only person with disability. They want to be one bigger, complete person who has their interests, their rights, their uh, everything, actually. And that's also the big deal to put themselves first and talk about themselves as a one bigger person, bigger than only disability, bigger than only wheelchair or anything else. Uh, so the, the, those are the things that I have in mind always when I talk about our youth. Uh, I will <laughs> proceed next, but thank you for your question. Okay, I got the microphone, but I'm definitely not the person to answer this question. I can just share that um, my, my opinion, is that young people, which I'm meeting every day, still don't know what they want to change. Uh, personal assistance is definitely one thing, necessary and the key thing. Also, uh, any any other uh, factor to independent living. Also, they want to a lot to raise question about uh, love and sexuality, like any young people. But still, there is uh, that lack of full awareness of what actually is the thing I hate the most around the, the society and their barriers. So I think that's gonna be in, in sense of next next phase uh, of, of being aware actually of the circumstances and our own needs and, and generally everything. So the, the, the full lack of that awareness is showing how much uh, how much awareness needs to change, and how much um, problem, how big problem actually is. Because if if all my life somebody's telling me what I should think, what I should believe, what I should want, it's very hard to take responsibility for that. It takes time. Yeah. Oh, uh, the, we see that uh, the young people with disabilities are, are very unpinned. I'm patient that they want to be to make their voices heard now and it should be heard yesterday and they want changes and the society now and they're, they're very good at using the social media as a arena to show that they are natural part of the society to show um, to share from the everyday life to share that they go to education that I have a working life or that they go travel around the world that they are a natural part of society so I think the thing that uh, that uh, describes the youth nowadays is that they are very impatient yeah and visible and, and that's 
I mean, it's, it's very interesting. You, you guys, I see you guys on sort of at the, at the beginning of the curve, and and Norway uh, on the on the top of the curve. But the the, the essence of, of what, what all three of you are saying is it's, it's the same. It's impatience. We want our rights. We want them now. We want our freedom. We want to be part of a society. We want to be. A, yeah, it's a, it's a really good example. Where, yeah, uh, <laughs> we have a spectrum. <laughs> one, one more question, and then I would like to concentrate much more on activism and dilemma. I, I will raise uh, uh, after the, the, this discussion. To those of you um, who have worked directly with young people and to question, involved in advocacy. And we'll be curious about the conversation of the groups you had. Do you have experience of including young people? Yeah, I think there is um, something your, with your uh, phone, some interference. Oh, yeah. well, let me Let's see. see. Right. Does it work here? Maybe just a little bit closer to the mouth. Uh, do you have experience of including young people in this work who are, for example, survivors of psychiatry, who have significant cognitive limitations and need the content simplified for them, and have psychosocial problems and do not connect with the rest of the year. young people struggle without extensive support, <coughs> or who might in fact be in need of long transition periods, like years of transition and practice to learn to use personal assistance. I would really, really benefit from having any descriptions of examples of successful work. Great question. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I must say that uh, in the uh, work of LOTOS, uh, we are aware <laughs> that there are different groups of persons with disability who need some kind of adaptation of support we are providing to each other. And uh, uh, due to that, we uh, really uh, make effort to, to connect uh, one organization with whom we are uh, working uh, closely from Tuzla, uh, and uh, uh, the name is Phoenix, uh, uh, and uh, who is uh, working to provide support to people with psychosocial disability, and to make uh, to to connect them with the, with the brothers or sister organization. From, from Sweden. And another part is a process of our learning. Uh, what are differences in uh, uh, providing support to different groups of persons with disability and to involve them in our activities in a way for some of them uh, is important to, to feel uh, our activities, uh, performance of our activities and our premises as a safety place in which they are equal like other, you know. And when we uh, convince those people with disability that the, the, and the they recognize place and us as a as a persons uh, uh, with, uh, to which they can trust uh, easily, they come and become part of our activities. And we are proud that they are examples. There, there is a girl, for example, with psychosocial disability who is uh, really, really improving her uh, capacity and now is much more involved 
in, a, in a activity in their own organization, but in the disability women uh, movement we want to establish in Bosnia. And that's, that's, that's the great, great thing. I don't know if Sandra wants to add something more. And Martina as well. Yeah, so I explained uh, mainly all. I will just say that uh, the num yes, in, in project there is uh, three young people with intellectual disability uh, and also people with, with, with psychosocial disability, mainly trauma survivors and, and people who face uh, psychiatry. Um, but so I mentioned, and I have to address that this, it's a learning process for us. Uh, we had to give up some expectations about what this program is and what is not. To be really inclusive means not to have any kind of pre predisposition expectation about how should something end in a result. But that allowed us to really create safe space, space and inclusive uh, environment in which uh, I'm happy that now in Lotus in the company, uh, that Lotus founded, where young people with disability work. We have people working with intellectual disability, which is, and psychosocial disability also. Uh, to be involved in a work process, I think it's the one of the highest level of independence. Really. So, um, yeah, we are learning, but making progress. Yeah, in, in Lotus, we have there is people that need support to make decisions. We only have uh, like guardianships, but there are uh, not, um, there is some person that makes a decision for, uh, for people that has uh, intellectual disability. But now Ruba have an ongoing project about uh, to make a system to support um, the system, the system making. Uh, so we ha I have project about about microbes for people with intellectual disabilities that we are going to uh, present uh, next spring, uh, and we are working for the government to get rid of the guardianship and uh, get a system for supported uh, system making and we also see that uh, a lot of people with intellectual disabilities um, uh, live in institutions in Norway and do not have personal assistance uh, so we work to, to Build down institutions in Norway and so everyone can decide uh, where they can live and live with a personal assistant. But there's some yeah, ongoing process that we are not finished with. So I think it will, we will work on that for many decades. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have something I don't know who will be useful. It's about most persons with autism. Uh, so it's uh, one organization I'm working with. Uh, they organized uh, like uh, dancing classes with traditional dances and uh, it's with the help of parents, of course, but uh, it's really, really amazing because uh, those, they're mostly kids and the young people, uh, they have a big portion of social life in that terms. So with people with uh, autism, it's always some kind of routine and it's really important, of course. But uh, when they started, they didn't have anyone who is from medical area. They have only choreographs who learned with them how to approach, how to talk with them. Some of them aren't verbal at all. So it was really amazing to see them. Some of them started to sing, to dance, uh, to do uh, that kind of practice, which was really unknown for us. And uh, like Aaron before me said, it's always a working process. And it's something we all learn from. So uh, that was, I mean, earlier this year, I was going to 
make a show and so I start to record that for one television show I work for and they were really really uh, you 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 would never say they have any kind of disability so that's the practice I think it's really really nice totally experimental we we don't know where that going to be in a few years but for now I think it's really nice to make that uh, uh, that place which is safe, which is social, and where they feel really important, like they do something. Uh, also, they had a big concert a few months ago, which was like uh, all sold out. I went to see that. And that's something that I'm really happy about, and maybe something that will be like some kind of inspiration there in the brain. <laughs> Thank you. Although I know that we are almost out of time for for the workshop, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I, I I'm keeping time. Um, I really wa want like to 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 raise a question or dilemma. Either uh, young people with disability uh, need to start from the beginning build their own network, build their own structure to fight, struggle for the rights and their, uh, their place, their position in society, or uh, need to be involved in an in a already existing organization and uh, spend part of their energy, knowledge, and experience uh, motivation to struggle, let's say, uh, not against, but with current leadership in those organizations for their space and for their ideas uh, uh, in the process of struggling for rights of persons with disabilities. I know that this is a dilemma always existing, but I also uh, think that uh, young people need to try to, to, to change attitude of already existing organization who have history, who have a relationship within the society, who have resources, et cetera, et cetera. And Within this, this structure, uh, young people with disability need to find their place to, to, to influence uh, uh, society, policies, whatever they want to influence to be changed. And I, I said many times, and I heard that uh, the, the, the future is not beginning with, with us, but future uh, is on the shoulder of those activists which struggle, struggle, struggle before us for uh, this, what we have today, and uh, give us a fundament to continue to struggle, not to start from the beginning. And uh, with this, I would like to ask for the final comments uh, my uh, colleagues uh, who make uh, great uh, efforts and contribution to, to our workshop. And I, uh, I really uh, believe that it will motivate all of you to, 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 to mobilize yourself and uh, your colleagues, allies within, the, uh, within the, your countries to get much more space for youth to be involved, to learn uh, how to, 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 to struggle, how to be together and have unified voice and unified strength to, to make changes we want to see in our societies. So uh, Sandra, then Milica, then uh, Martin, your final words. Yeah, 
Okay, uh, so as someone who actually does both, I'm involved in those traditional national organization and I started a new one. <laughs> I would like to say uh, it's really important to be involved everywhere. So of course, that's energy and time consuming. I don't want to lie, I'm sometimes like dead body just, but it's really important to be here and there because uh, you have a knowledge which is valuable and you can find the answers in those organizations who are all already established. Although I had some experience where uh, people who run those organizations, they're kind of uh, in some way spread with the decision makers and sometimes they do things uh, like they said, and that's something I don't like personally. And so I organized my organization with those young people who uh, share those values and who don't want to uh, wait, as Martin said, uh, they're unpatient. And we have to uh, we have to respect that that unpatience coming from somewhere, and we have to take responsibility for that. So. Uh, being here and being there is uh, really important for my, my life now because I know how much I get from those organizations and I can give much more to my young organization and to you because I know how to struggle and I know how to help them to uh, be prepared for something that's coming. So uh, it's a coexist and I think uh, we should cooperate in many ways. So you have to be part of the society as well. And that's the, the link I want to be for organizations and for typical society to be somewhere in the middle and to communicate with everyone where I know that that's like, sometimes it's impossible, of course, but trying and struggling is something I really do and I know how to do now. Being in the media for like three or more years, I realized how much people actually want to help and want to find out. So that's that's a big thing. And sometimes you it's too much effort for one person. But when you find people who share your enthusiasm and your ideas and values that that's going to be a bit easier but still it's something uh, we work on and something which is uh, really really important to uh, establish in a way that it's working uh, so yeah uh, both of those are coexist and it's really important to make uh, some link to function thank you Um, if we want to start everything from beginning, it's gonna re be required a lot of lot more work than if we really build something on the on the results of previous generations. Um, that would be ideal. It would be ideal if if young people can be involved in an organization already existing and take leadership and move on from there. But unfortunately, uh, not all organ not all leadership is. Um, providing enough space for young people to really contribute in a way. Uh, I know when I started working in Lotus and the first uh, conversation which I had with Suar was about who will work on this when we are not there. So some leaders are quite aware that history is not finishing with them and they are doing everything possible to invest in young generation. Uh, invest not not just projects, but their own emotions, their life vision is to, to create a new generation of fighters. But unfortunately, there is a lot of organization very stuck in traditional models, uh, continuing to do always the same things, even they're not working. And in this way, I, I really understand what uh, what uh, my young colleague for Serbia was, was saying about the, the things that sometimes we need just to leave. Yeah, to move forward. But uh, uh, not denying anything that has been done, but uh, if struggle to, to influence uh, older generation or leaders who don't want to, to
to, uh, to, to change that approach, which is obviously not working in the modern world because the world is changing. Change is the only constant ever. So if they're not changing, then young people, we can't expect them to invest so much energy in that. But in a sense, to find place where they can, that would be like, for, in my opinion, the perfect solution to really recognize those organization initiatives, groups, leaders who are willing to, to let them join the circle and participate in conversation. That's, I think, the most important thing. Not to say they're all the same, they're all, they don't know, but really to, to observe what people are doing, how they're spending their, their time in sense of, of, of advocacy work and what they believe in and not just what they say, but also what they do. And then join those who really uh, have enough space for, for them and fight for uh, the things they care about. So. Yeah, in Norway, there's a lot of organization. It's a organization about every aspect of society. I think uh, there's a lot of organization for a lot by disabled people and um, so I don't think they need a new organization but I do think they need an uh, organization for only youth because I see it's a different atmosphere uh, being in a youth organization than in uh, an adult organization because I have been active in the Norwegian uh, Association of Disabled Youth and there uh, we work more effectively, we were uh, much more impatient than in the adult organization. And, uh, and uh, I think it's very hard work uh, for youth to change attitude in the adult organization. I sit in the central board of the Norwegian Association of Disabled, and I, I feel like the change in their goal much more slower and we need to talk about stuff other than do action and make change in the society but I think it's important to make room for uh, young disabled people in the adult organization and make the uh, voices of youth heard because the youth are the uh, next uh, generation of fighters and it's the one who's going to uh, live in this society so I think it's important to make room for young leaders and the thing that is that makes me so angry in Norway there is a lot of organization for disabled people but the person that are leaders and work in this organization is non-disabled people. And that, that makes me so angry. And I work in Luba and there with 50% of all staff have to be disabled people. And we, when we are out talking in the media, it has to be um, disabled people who are fronting our work. So I wish that more um, organization for people with disability actually put disabled people up front to, to actually put into pra practice nothing about us without us. So that is my wish for the future. People. We are almost in the beginning <laughs> uh, of the future, but end of the of this workshop. For them, uh, I would like to to thank to presenters, my colleagues. Uh, they show that uh, there is a lot of work and experience we can talk about and use to motivate and mobilize. Uh, young people with disability to take their destinies in their hands and to talk and struggle for 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 our rights. Uh, and I would like to thank 
to Ines and the colleague who take uh, notes for, from, from this workshop. Although I know uh, it was uh, really challenging to, to, to notify everything important we discuss about. And I would like to talk, uh, to, to thank all of you freedom drivers to, for participation in this workshop. And I wish that we don't have rain tomorrow. And uh, I, I, I would like uh, uh, us to be loud, proud, strong, and visible in demanding our rights, rights in front of uh, citizens of Brussels, in front of European Union institutions, in front of and within the Parliament uh, of EU. And uh, I would like uh, thank, uh, because me personally, I, uh, I become younger, much younger than, than I am, uh, uh, listening to all uh, of those stories. And I really hope that you enjoy and you are much, much more motivated now to continue to, to create space for young people with disability to become much more active everywhere they want to be active. Thank you very much. Just to say thank you to Suad, of course. <laughs> Can I just say the next workshop here is in one hour uh, at four o'clock. That's the last workshop for today. Uh, that's the workshop on the institutionalization. And I completely forgot to mention it in the last workshop, but we, um, as we are receiving funding from the European Union for this, for the, the part of the funding for the Freedom Drive, they are expect us to uh, complete their um, evaluation form. It is a little bit complicated, so I don't expect you to do it at the moment, but just please be aware that we will send this to you by email and if you would be so kind to, <laughs> to click and answer the survey, um, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, if you do want to do it now, there is a QR code on the door which you can scan with your phone and then you have to put in the details, the reference of the project, the type of activity, as I said, it's complicated. But if you do feel like doing it now, feel free. Otherwise, we will send it to you by email after the Freedom Drive and ask you kindly to, to do this. Uh, so see you here in one hour. Thank you. Here and I